Welcome to our new feature, Leeds Rhinos Cribs. Whose house am I in front of? We will find out. It's number six. Could it be Danny Maguire? Let's go inside to investigate. Come with me. We are inside the kitchen. Let's check out what's in the fridge. So there's some low pack, a couple of cheeses. We've got loads of chicken here, water, tons of sauces and some baby bells. In fact, I'm going to save this for later. Don't mind if I do. Over here, we have a coffee machine. I'm guessing they really like coffee, especially this could be a clue. It says Frog's Espresso. I'll be having that. Let's go check out the garden. This person looks like they've got a really nice garden. I think this is AstroTurf. Could that give something away? Let's go see what's in the garage. This person clearly likes boxing, hence there's loads of boxing pads around here. And also from looking in his fridge, we know that he likes to keep himself fit and there's loads and loads of protein. Let's see what else we've got in here. There's a shot here from 2008. This person clearly likes heritage, especially at Leeds Rhinos. Is that a clue? Over here, we have some boxing gloves. There's one here from Josh Warrington. I can't quite get, we'll, we'll leave that one. Over here, should we go try out the pad? I think we'll leave it to him. Wow, what a gorgeous living room. And I've noticed as well, that on here, there's lots of pictures of his teammates and lots of Leeds Rhinos heritage. Also on here, there's a bit of unusual artwork going on, which I can also see on the other side of the room, which is a Nelson Mandela artwork. Let's go check out the sofa. Is it as good as it looks? very comfy sofa and wow look how big this TV is clearly this person likes to chill out on the sofa and watch some good films so we've just been in the lounge let's go check out what's upstairs so he seems to have left his kit bag out should see if what's inside I think we'll leave that to laundry let's come in the bedroom Wow, this person clearly has good interior design skills. Let's check out the bed. <laughs> this is a really good bed. Let's investigate anything more that we can find. Hmm, nice, nice smells. We won't go in that one. Oh, is this a clue? Frog pajamas? Who would wear these pyjama pants? Save them. Coming from the bedroom, I have found a closet room full of shoes and clothes. Let's check out what size this man is. Nine and a half. Clearly not Rob Burrow. Another clue over here. I've just found this player's heritage number clearly showing that Leeds Rhinos is a big part of his life, that he's been playing for a long time. And also beside his heritage number, I found these boots which I think have been in some big games. I think I may have found the clue that gives it away. I'm in the bathroom and I've found these teeth. I think I know who it is. We have a chat with the homeowner after this next feature with Phil Holmes. I'm here this morning uh, with uh, Rhinos TV and we've come along to look at the uh, start of John's statue, which uh, is going to be erected in the, behind the new South Stand in Leeds. John played 625 games for Leeds, uh, played in 19 finals, uh, scored over 1,500 points at his time at Leeds um, and that's why the club and uh, the Heritage Committee as such have uh, wanted John immortalising at the ground. Let's go inside and catch up with Steve Winterburn who's the sculptor who actually did the Wembley statue um, and we'll catch up with Steve and uh, just give you a few snippets of what's happening with the statue but we won't show everything because we want to keep it as a little bit of a surprise. So, so why do you think Steve it's important to immortalise people? Uh, whether it's important or not, I think the main thing is it's about celebrating great players in rugby league and John is probably one of many. You can't do them all. You've got to pick one as a diplomat. Um, from, the, from what I've heard about John, we've worked at Wigan, we've worked at many other clubs about sculptures and other sculptures looking at in the sporting field. And people talk about great legends and John being one of them. 
And that's what's important. They're never are lost in their memories. So I think to have one immortalized, is, a lot of people say, why should we immortalize one person? You're not really immortalizing one person, but immortalize one, immortalize the rest of them because you tell the story. So the story is ongoing because of that. It creates conversation, engages people into the history of the sport. So that's what's important. To me, it's not about just John. It's about the whole history of the club and, and yeah. where he was coming from a local lad to, to get into the heights that he got to. And, and it's there for everybody to have a go at, all the young kids coming through. Yeah. And, and so it's about the fans that came to watch him over the years. So it, it's not just around his statue, it's around the whole culture of the club and the heritage of the club for me. And that's, yeah. that's as important as anything. Well, I remember when you first came, both you and your brother were a bit uncomfortable getting John done anyway, because you'd said yourself, you've had such great people there, but it's through public, through the, the club, voting for him because I remember you and your brother saying well we're not quite sure about doing this and that is that sort of should it be our brother should it and you totally understand that if you're a working class like that's what it's about so I think it's overwhelming with the people you've got and the people interest that have shown massive interest in it you're the right guy. I've tried to involve as many people as possible to get this um, right I didn't yeah. want to people turning up and saying it doesn't look like him so that's been the major major part of it was facially um, getting that right and then of course the rest of the figure um, getting the right movement we knew what John was like what his, uh, his best parts was his passing game which we looked at um, and that's the way we, we've sort of worked down that route and I think it's gone yeah, fairly it's well now, it? yeah it's progressed yeah, well yeah. it is hard for anybody to see somebody they knew or somebody they remember whether they played with him or his family when you produce a head that is only about an inch and a half big in the eye Getting the perspective around it is always difficult, which is the thing we've struggled with most of the way. Right. But once we start the big one, it becomes much easier. It is a learning curve for all of us, even as the artists. You know, we're just the tools to do the job. We need that influence from the club, the family, as we have had. Yeah. And we must have changed the position of it about five or six times or more. That's Over right. the period yes, of time, yes, we've yes. pulled it around, yes. we've pulled his head around, we've changed everything about it. How much has that ball been moved by everybody? Well, by me especially. <laughs> yeah. So it's become... Yes. You know, a passion. It has been from you guys, the club. So the years haven't been wasted. It has been that fine tuning and making anything that's worth doing take time and put it right. What a great interview with Phil. As you can see, I am joined by the owner of the house, Brett Delaney. And I've actually found your teeth, Brett. <laughs> Cheers, Phil. I've been missing them for about a week. <laughs> There so Brett, thank you for letting us look round your home for the first Leeds Rhinos Cribs. Yeah. Um, so looking in your garage, there was a lot of other things other than rhinos and rugby. And tell us a bit about what you like to do in your spare time. Well, in my spare time, you know, I like drinking coffee also. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah, there's a bit of boxing memorabilia in there. Got uh, I got a signed glove off uh, Josh Warrington, and he's a he's a Leeds lad doing well. So. Yeah, other than that, there's a, there's a few little boxing things in there. I've got some mats down in there, so, um, you know, I try and keep fit in the off-season, you know, and do a little bit of boxing in there. So, yeah, and it uh, gets me away from the missus. <laughs> <laughs> and your bed must be the comfiest bed I've ever sat on. Is it yeah. an expensive bed? Uh, yeah, we won't go down prices, but, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a nice big Super King bed, so... Um, you know, uh, we'll leave it at that, eh? <laughs> it's a good bet. <laughs> so tell us, you've been at the club for a long time. Tell us what it means to you being part of the heritage of the club, winning the treble, and where you think the club's going forward with the new stands. Yeah, well, obviously this is my eighth season at the club and, you know, it's been the, it's been the best decision I've made in my career, you know, to date. Um, I've said that numerous times and um, obviously, you know, with the success I've had, you know, winning the treble in 2015 was... Unbelievable, and you know, I don't know if it'll ever be done again. And um, you know, that was a great year. Um, but yeah, my uh, every year's been, you know, I've had a memory from every year since 2010. Yeah, obviously, it's exciting times, you know, with the you know the stand getting knocked down. But you know, the South Stand, you know, it's it's very special, you know, to us players. And you know, it's sad to see it go, but obviously, the new redevelopment will, um, you know, increase the the stadium make it look up to date and you know um, I think it'll come back bigger and better and um, I can't wait to get back out there and play in front of you know a 20,000 pack Leeds uh, Headley Stadium. So tell me what are the frog pyjamas all about? For those people that don't know where the frog comes from what is that about? Uh, I'll answer <laughs> the first bit uh, Mrs bought the frog pyjamas for I don't know whether it's for my birthday actually no it was my birthday because my birthday soon it was last year so might be Valentine's Day, I think I got it. I got them. 
I don't think girls really buy boys' presents, but <laughs> I got one. But um, the, th- the frog thing comes from my dad. Obviously, my dad's nickname is Bulldog, or like, but they call him Bully, so like Bullfrog. So it's quite boring, but I've been called it since I was a kid, and um, the only people that really call me Brett is my mum, and that's when I'm in trouble. So <laughs> I don't really, uh, I don't answer to Brett. So if um, if I ignore you, it's not because I'm ignorant or arrogant. It's because uh, no one, no one calls me Brett uh, uh, except my mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Brett, for, for taking us behind the scenes of your home. <laughs>